good Friday morning here on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Yes, we've rebranded the show and the last few days have been not that, but now it's actually here and it's the very first episode of the week where I've recorded in 2020 and I can actually say Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown. Yes, I'm marketing here for myself. So there we go. Um, today, we are doing something different on the show. Today, we are doing a new sort of segment, sort of new addition to the show, where the first Friday of each month, we are going to pose a question, and we're going to have someone on the show, and we're going to discuss that question. And today's question is quite an interesting conversation, because I was recently on a podcast, and I was attacked for some of the statements I said. And I want to ask the question, the purity test, is it biased against certain political leanings? And the, the reason I ask that is because the purity test that I'm talking about is if someone says something, if they're in the left-leaning political realm, are they attacked on the same scale if they were said on the right? The reason I ask that is we go back to 2019, the a federal election, and in that federal election, 2019, Justin Trudeau was discovered to have done blackface not once, not twice, but three times and potentially even more. The left was pissed, angry, upset. But a week later, Andrew Scheer, the then conservative leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, announced by his own doing that he was a duo, du dual citizen. Him, a Canadian and American, his father was an American. Now you think doing blackface would be the bigger story. But Twitter, which we should always believe what Twitter says, sought out to say, no, being a dual citizen was a bigger issue. So I asked the question, and I'm going to ask the question to Jeremy, our guest today, Jeremy Woolard, who has a return to the podcast after a, a little bit of a plea to say, I need someone on the show. And he said, sure, let's do it. I'm going to ask the question, Jeremy, what's your thoughts on this so-called purity test that social media and the general public have put on people of prominence. Okay. Well, <laughs> how did you I, adjust there? <laughs> well, I hope Chris, uh, that my answer is not too short and we can find some filler for the next little bit here, but I'll be perfectly blunt with you. I hate it. I absolutely hate the purity test. And I'll tell you why I hate the purity test. Because as you grow up and as you grow and learn and your positions, issues evolve, you can do one of two things. You can either stick with your guns, plant your feet, in the, plant your uh, feet in the ground and say, no, I'm not moving. Or you can look at the evidence. You can look at what's there. You can then go and actual do some, you know, real research, not just like, oh, I read this on Facebook, or oh, I listened to the, or I read this tweet, or oh, I skimmed a, I skimmed an article and maybe understand maybe like a sentence of it and assume that I already have my own conclusions. Or, you know, you can, you know, do the deep dive that you need to do and actually consider the bigger picture. And then also think realizing that if you are so-called clinging to this purity test, remember that there's going to be somebody who's going to be more pure than you and will ultimately try and eviscerate you for something or another. So I hate it. Absolutely hate it. And in my own way, I live it every single day and it is tiring. Tiring trying to have to live up to everybody's expectations or standards when, re, when at the end of the day, the real question is, what do you stand for? What do you believe in? And can you work with people who are willing to accept what you believe in or what you stand for? Or are you going to be forced in do you, or are you going to be forced into silence? Now, but, now the reason yeah. so I'm going to interrupt here for a second, because a I love the fact that we agree on this. I think there's a lot of people who don't agree on this. And I feel if you want to send your feedback, please send it and I will file it away in the appropriate location as I always do on all my shows. Um, but when I say purity test, people are probably thinking purity test, the purity ring when you're a teenager, you're not going to have sex until you're older. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the purity test of getting canceled of the canceled culture that we are living in today. And don't get me wrong, there are some people who deserve to be uh, canceled, but I wanna know 
And Jeremy, you might be able to elaborate a little bit better than I can here. What's the standard? You talked about the standard, but it doesn't seem like there's a standard for left-leaning politicians or celebrities versus right-leaning celebrities and politicians. Do you agree with that? I think depending on your audience, I think there's definitely a there's definitely room to say, oh, there's two different standards that we're willing to we're willing we're willing to rake someone over the coals and we're not willing to let someone else have a pass. And everybody to some degree or another is going to find themselves on a different end of a spectrum. You to say you're not and to say you're completely uh, unattached to anything is a lie. Let's just be let's just be very clear. It's a lie. Anyone who says, oh, I, I don't cling to this are probably the first people to actually do it. So I'm going to be perfectly blunt there and say that. I recognize it. Part of it is bias. You have to recognize your own inherent biases. And where does, where does that bias come from, though? Because that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it, is it social media biased or is it political bias or is it just the blinders that we want to put on and just think this person can do no wrong so i don't care what they do okay well there's a there could be a few different answers to that chris that's a that's a rather that's a rather loaded question but let's try and let me try and do what i can to narrow it down a bit i'll take you back quickly to 2005 when i attended a uh, personal development program and they talked about they talked about biases. They didn't use the word bias, but they talked about the story. Talked about the story about what happened, what did you make it mean, and instead of recognizing that there's two different circles, you collapse them. So what this becomes, this becomes your inherent, this becomes your interpretation of it, your interpretation of what's going on around you. And then with that interpretation, your whole worldview is ultimately shifted you see things very differently and you react accordingly we're creatures of reaction sometimes we like to act sometimes but most times we like to react to something else going on like i don't want to go i don't want to go well i don't want to go churchy on anybody because that's just not the point but i understand it it. you have a choice to be act well it's a choice to act or a choice to be acted upon yeah. Like you can either be cause in your cause in the life or you can be effect. So, and some people think they're cause, but really all it is, is they're coming down to an effect. Some external stimuli has motivated you to think and act and do a certain way. And where you think that you're taking proactive measures to make yourself a better person, all you're doing is responding to something you don't quite understand. And I'm going to tell you a quick story to help maybe shape and mold this conversation that um, has a profound impact on me and it has profound impact to this day almost was it 2022 now so we're almost looking at 16 years later has an impact okay so let's put the chips on the table in 2000 june of 2006 i was assaulted i had the crap kicked out of me i was thrown downstairs, I was slammed into furniture, two black eyes, bloody hips, bruised hips. It was a fucking shit show. Let's be real, I'm gonna swear. Anyway. We, um, we are a PG-13 show, so go right ahead. You got well, one yeah, per episode. Think, yeah, there you go. But no, the, real, the reality is, is that I was, I was, I was assaulted. I had made some choices that in the grand scheme of the things didn't necessarily warrant what happened to me but my roommate at the time felt that they did and he had the he had the audacity to declare as he was as he took his big hands and smashed my face in just like that saying i'm not being a bully it's about you taking responsibility for your own life okay so understand there is there i am going somewhere with this so as a result of this this is what happened this is where i'm making it mean that i've been lazy i've been complacent i've been ignorant naive 
and that because this happened as a result of this, if I do something, if I behave and act a certain way, then I must be this. Okay. Here we go. Now let's get to the real meat and potatoes and let's bring it back to the topic at hand that gives you context. So, uh, so Chris, so a couple months later, I ended up joining my church. My church, very much the church, Jesus Christ Latter day Saints, very much traditionally a very conservative church, a very right wing church. When we talk about attributes such as personal responsibility, accountability, choice and agency, self reliance. Okay. Again, here's what the words are. And culturally, those values, you would probably agree, definitely fall on a political spectrum. They would sound like, oh, those are things traditionally espoused by right wing or center right right wing politics. Okay, which now gives a culture that the that the Latter-day Saints Church is a conservative church. And if you are not doing those things, if you're looking for handouts or you're seeing the good in the work, you're being optimistic, some people might call you naive, then there ergo, you must be a liberal, you must be a lefty, you must be something that is absolutely scared and trampled upon. Okay. Now, in my own ignorance, 16 years ago, I fell into that trap. I fell into that bias, not because I and I and I here's the thing I told myself, you know what, I'm not, I don't want other people to fall down the same path I did. So I'm going to make it a point of, you know, setting a good example, thinking that I'm actually taking cause in the life, but realizing years later that all I was doing was reacting to trauma. What I was actually responding to was the night I was assaulted, was when I got the shit kicked out of me. And it took another traumatic event. You know, I went and served a mission. I went to serve in the in the Ivory Coast. And I can tell you the exact moment when that worldview was shattered. It was shattered two o'clock in the morning one night. And I'm listening to a husband beat his wife while their baby was crying and screaming. I was living in an apartment on the second floor and one fence over and down, there was a little shanty hut built and I'm listening to all of it. I could hear it out my window and I didn't sleep that night. I was absolutely in tears. I couldn't fathom what was going on. I couldn't fathom how someone could do that to another human being. And then things started to change, recognizing that as I was living in the Ivory Coast and watching good, hardworking people try and get by the best as they can, but needing help, needing assistance, not able to be fully self-sufficient. But they weren't bad people, Chris. They were good people. Yeah. So it took moving for a year to the other part of the world and then realizing the fucking hubris that comes from first world problems to realize that no this worldview that i had was only a response to trauma was a response to something that happened to me and i'm trying to make sense of it so that's when i know my biases started to shift fast forward to 2015 and the election of rachel notley and the ndp in alberta I was taught as a kid, the NDP were bad and horrible. That's what I was taught. That's what I was ingrained in. I lived in rural Alberta. That's what we were told that they were, that they were only, they were only just slightly to the right of scallop where some people have used that as an, as an example, but I didn't see any of that from the Notley NDP. It was kind of bold of them when they put Peter Lougheed in their own campaign platform from that year that started making people think, well, what's really going on? So I, I took that and Ralph Klein's daughter coming out and endorsing yeah. the NDP. I was like, what is this going on here? But okay. Yeah, we're, we thought we thought <laughs> then that we were living in the weirdest timeline. <laughs> Who knows how weird that timeline became? 
the darkest timeline was not that yet. Yeah, no, <laughs> we had any reference. Woo! But anyway, yeah, we, have, we haven't even hit the darkest timeline yet. But you start noticing, and like I say, and at church over the years, just from a cultural perspective, my own social views began to change. And actually, I would say more so start to reassert themselves, reassert who I actually was from the get go. Someone who actually, you know, wanted to see good in people, who wanted to see real equality, who wanted to see compassion, who wanted to see that we weren't being like freaking Pharisees and cast and castrating people and ostracizing people for being different. That these, what I call paradoxes in my own head, shape the biases and shape those, those benchmarks for this whole purity thing that we're talking about. And realizing, okay, well, if these are the gateposts. Am I, am I hitting them? Am I not hitting them? But then realizing that, no, you didn't have a, there was no logical answer. Nothing about what I had been thinking made sense. Yeah. And 2015, the election of the NDP, I'm frustrated. I'm having a mental breakdown because I'm trying to see my place in the world and try and realize what is going on. And then I actually had a friend of mine who was in our was in our congregation and who identified himself as a progressive Latter-day Saint who was actually very pro NDP and I never thought never thought in a million years he would be but he was and we started having conversations and he started reshaping that reality a little bit and I guess from there it started to have me think okay where do I really stand on something where do I stand? And then, well, I guess actions kind of speak, actions speak louder than words, as you still try and think you believe and belong somewhere. Like, as you can see, I got a nice poster, uh, Peter Lougheed's, uh winning campaign in hanging on my wall right now. So that's from his original, that's from his original win in the 70s. That was the beginning of the Lougheed legacy sitting on my wall. I, I think I need to start collecting political items. I just don't know if I have the room for them yet. Yeah, no, fair enough. Like I have that framed on my wall. That's awesome. But if I moved my camera around, which I see if I can try and do this easily without wrecking everything. Fight Look, for I, got my Rachel Not I got yeah. my Rachel Notley signs too. So like you said, there's, um, there's, some, there's some shifts. So I guess, Chris, what I'm trying to say with all with this whole with this whole little narrative is that biases change and perceptions change reality changes so when you're trying to sit there and someone's trying to tell you oh you must be this way or you must fit this bowl or else you're not left enough or you're not right enough to both part to both sides of this equation i say fuck y'all because that's here three, i am Jeremy. that's three okay <laughs> sorry okay, go ahead well, anyway, you got to count. I don't know. I'm going to hell anyway. There you go. But no, think about it, though. Even here, Chris, look, I have religious, I have my Book of Mormon, a couple of things from Brigham Young University. And look, I got a pride flag hanging in my office. And that doesn't go anywhere. That stays there. Even that own bias, it's like, oh, Mormons must hate gay people. I'm like, no, not all of them do. This one doesn't. This one will sit and march, march in pride. This one will go and be friends with members of the LGBTQ2S plus community. Yeah, exactly. I shared my car with you. We've had so much fun and everything else under the sun. We right? got lost in Southern Alberta, uh, Southern Calgary. It was awesome. We really did. We, re we really did. I think your, hu I, I, I think your husband is, is amazing. Oh. I think he's like the, uh, an absolute gem. But that's what people don't see. People don't see that. People assume that like say i got friends in my community that say oh you're too lefty and i got people on the on the left saying you're too righty and i'm just like no screw y'all i'm me if it doesn't work with your worldview well that's not my problem that is your problem and it's your your assessments that have to be re that have to be reevaluated and i know that sounds like oh you're just pointing fingers and blaming people but no because if I don't understand somebody, is that, be, is that because of them? Or is that because of me not understanding? So when you really are people calling out, it's that your own, I find that your own review of the world 
is so shaky that you have to resort to, to attacking someone. So you attack them by saying, if you don't fit this mold, you don't count. Well, I call bullshit to that. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. I... I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, there's a few things I want to unpack there. First off, thank you for opening up and telling that story about you and uh, your uh, assault. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, this was not preamble to uh, get you to tell that story. Uh, you no, opened up but it had... on your own. I just want to make sure my listeners aren't like, did he force coerce that out of? There? Oh hell no, 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 no. <laughs> if it if now, if it let's say if it helps. If it helps and informs and gives people context for their own world and have them relate to something, then yeah, it's a story I'm going to tell. So, so no, no preamble, no preamble, <laughs> listeners. Chris did not set me up to do this. The, so the next area I want to talk about is during the during the last municipal election. So this is like literally four months ago, the federal yeah. election, uh, the municipal election. Uh, on social media, there was a lot of uh, hay about the fact that some people call themselves centrists. Now, I, I've always prided myself on being a centrist. I'm not right. I'm not left. I have right views. I have left views. I have center views. I, I believe in a spectrum of ideas, right? Because I think that's how we grow as a society and we grow as a people. They attacked me because I said I was a centrist. And dear God, I have never seen so many left-leaning people who I thought were my friends say, no, you are not centrist. You are more right-wing than everything, ever because I do hold some conservative views like yourself because... Like you said, you do hold some progressive conservative views. You hold some NDP views. And I do as well. And I hold some liberal views. I do hold some green views. Some, like, you name it, I will say, yes, I might agree with some situations. It makes me wonder, though, what is the what is the goalpost? Like, what is the goalpost that people hold up and say, okay, this is what you have to hit. If you don't hit it, it's you are not what I think you are. Are we, a, are we a society that the goalpost moves every day and every hour and every second that it is unachievable to effectively be the best person you are because society, and I say this as a Twitter society, and anyone who's listened to my show knows how much I despise Twitter, um, but you have to do it to promote yourself and marketing, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Is the goalpost that people have put up so unachievable, so unrealistic that they are afraid to even like have an intelligent conversation with someone who may disagree with them? Because I think that's what the purity test is really all about. If you don't agree with me, I don't want to listen to you. So I'm going to say you're canceled. I'm going to say you're you're no longer officially part of the club anymore. So you have to be out. So no one listens to them. And again, I say this knowing the fact that I'm going to be attacked on this because I think there are some times where people have done stupid, shitty things, irresponsible, le illegal things that need to be gone away from the society, AKA Sean Chu, counselor for Ward 4. But the issue that I have now is we have a liberal, former liberal MP, now an independent MP, who did the exact same thing as a military officer, not a peep. He posted something on social media today. Four people said something. Yet again, all of them were resigned. But it the, the time frame that has lapsed since it came out to now has been so long that we just don't care. Sean Chu, let's be honest, he's not the liberal in the group. He is probably on the more of the right spectrum. He has done something similar to Kevin Vong in uh, Fort Spadina, Fort Spadina, in uh, the riding of downtown Toronto. Okay. But he is being attacked, Sean Chu, more than this other guy. But literally, they came out roughly a month apart. But because he's a former liberal, are people just saying, okay, we're done with it? Like, I don't understand why the left will attack the right and think 
okay, he said it, he did it, he's not resigning with the right or the left, like with Kevin, the lib former liberal. So we're just moving on. Like, it seems like there's like, they're a dog that is trying to find a bone that they can't find when it comes to conservative ideology. And I, and this is the part that frustrates me. Fracking, and yet again, this is, this is Chris's story time for five minutes. Fracking, I believe should not be done. I do not agree with fracking for anyone who doesn't know what fracking is basically putting high uh, pressure energy or uh, gas into the ground to let natural gas escape, collect it, and then you sell it. I don't think it should happen. It happens here in Alberta, but I do not think it ha should happen. It causes uh, like water to catch on fire. It causes earthquakes, so on and so forth. I disagree with it full, full stop. RuPaul of RuPaul's Drag Race fracks. Fracks on a regular basis with her husband, her, his husband. Okay, RuPaul's got a pass. What? <laughs> the left will be upset that we frack, but it's okay for RuPaul, the queen of the drag queens, to frack because, well, let's be honest, it's RuPaul and she's amazing. No. And this is where this is where, this is my final statement on this before I let you talk, Jeremy. If there's a rule for one, there's a rule for all. You cannot change the name, you cannot change the goalpost to fit your narrative. If the narrative is there, it's there for everyone. I hold the standard. If you kill somebody, uh, let's put, actually back this up for a second. If you molest a child and are found guilty, I believe you should be sent to death. Plain and simple. No matter if you're on the left, right, center, should be sent to death. I know I'm going to get attacks from this because I am pro death penalty on that stance because I was assaulted, sexually assaulted as a teenager. So I believe that. Where I don't agree with is if I said, if I, I would contradict myself by saying, okay, he, he was a liberal, he was a green, he's an NDP, so it's okay, he should just go to jail. No, full blank across the board, you touch a child, you molest a child, you should go to jail and you should die. End of sentence. Jeremy, I know there's a lot to unpack there. Do you believe yeah. that the spectrum needs to be the goalpost for everyone and not just your people that you disagree with. I think you, you, you put it right there, Chris. What's good for the goose must be good for the gander. Like I literally just said that. Like, yeah. Like, like before like you got out, I was like, I'm gonna use that say because it's a great say and it's the best say no, that we what's can say. good for the goose has to be good, has <sighs> to be good for the gander. I think when it comes down to these goalposts and these standards that people are setting up for themselves, I'll be perfectly honest. You know where I learn ideologies from? I learned ideologies from a textbook, yeah. okay? I learned them from a checklist that someone is taking an idea of thought and compartmentalizing it into a checklist. You believe this, you believe this, you believe this, you believe this. And people have become so accustomed to it because it's how we learn how idea, how I, how political ideology works. This is, it's its, it's, it's genesis. Yeah. And unless you've gone, to post-secondary and have spent years in that field in political science, philosophy, whatever the case may be, and you've gone through and really done your homework on this, most people at a conversational level have that rudimentary understanding, okay? And it's on that rudimentary understanding that I have to speak from. It's like, I'd like to consider myself well-read and a little bit more informed, but I don't hold uh, a bachelor's or a master's or a doctorate in political science, philosophy, whatever the case you want to call it. So I'm not going to sit here and say that Jeremy has the be all end all answers to everything, because that would be a great case of Dunning Kruger at it's like right there, right there for the world to see. But I will say from that basic understanding of, okay, leftist politicians believe in a more regulated state believe in a more public role of government, whereas the right is more my freedoms, laissez-faire laissez economics, uh, decentralization of the state, okay? That's how people kind of see. And then you're starting to pigeonhole people based on what they say, what they do, whatever the case may be, you pigeonhole them. You want to cheer for your own team because we've gotten to this competitive environment that's us versus them. When really at the end of the day, we're all one giant society trying to figure things out. 
I guess I wanted to pull, I guess for me, I guess kind of think about that. I go back to uh, 96 and one of our fun movies there, Star Trek First Contact, when Deanna Troy tells uh, Zephram Cochran there in his drunken stupor, is like, you know, your work flight's going to hum- uh, unite humanity in a way no one thought possible when they realized they weren't alone. So here you are, here we are. We are right now as it stands we're the only group of what you would call potentially sentient life yeah we're trying to figure it out we're all all of us on this uh, on this rotating ball of rock are trying to figure out how to live and in order to make sure that we understand that you know what each of us is unique and holds value we drape ourselves in an identity we drape ourselves in who we want to be and then to ensure that we're not alone we find someone that we can relate to, that we can be, that we can emulate. We can find those heroes, those inspirational figures in society. And then a group of you all form together. Sometimes you might form a political party. Sometimes you might find a social group or a faith group or or a sports team. You find like-minded persons. But then on the flip side, you've got another group of people doing the exact same thing. So instead of realizing that you guys are more alike than different, people put the barriers up because they don't understand. People fear what they don't understand. And what they don't understand, they try and push aside. Now, going back to your comments about good for a goose is good for a gander and different cases for different, uh, different strokes for different folks, you're right. I've seen the stories you've talked about. I didn't see the one out of, out of Ontario though today. So that's new. That's new to me. I'm sitting there. The one you just shared about the MP from the former MP from Toronto. I didn't. Oh I didn't yeah. This, this came out, this came out like three days before the federal election was done in 2021. Oh. It was, it was announced that uh, during his time in the military, he had sexually assaulted women. Uh, he had touched them inappropriately and people got pissed off. They called for his resignation. And then a few like months later, there's hardly a peep about resigned. And I just, I, 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 and I know it's the middle of the winter and a lot of people were worrying about Christmas and all that, but. Well, you don't see, but you don't see that on social media when you can see tweets, resign Sean, Sean Chu, fire Sean Chu. And, and I got, think he should. I honestly think Sean oh, Chu. I, and I'm Kevin not disagreeing. Well. I just <laughs> I'm not disagreeing, but again, that same type of standard has to that same type of standard should apply. The and reality is though, here's the it, here's the kicker. Here's the massive kicker. Here's the that? kicker that pisses me off all the time. Justin Trudeau is on record of being alleged to have groped a female journalist during his time in BC when before he entered politics. She yes. wrote a, she wrote a big long uh, editorial about this. And yet again, not a peep. And this is my this is my issue. What, good for the goose, good for the gander. Everyone, similar. Right. I but again, have, this is no, going to be a fun right. conversation. And I'm not gonna, no, and I'm not trying. And I'm not going to excuse. I will not excuse bad behavior. I'm a, I'm in that camp that if you do that if you if you do the crime, you do you do the time. Mm-hmm. The other part of that too, though, is and here's where we get stuck, is the court of public opinion, right? is not a court is not a court of law everyone has to go through their own do their own do their own due process they all have to and i know that's a really bad answer but the reality is that it does exist and here's a point on that one let's use today let's talk about briefly for a moment just as a kind of a not so much as a sidetrack or distract from the issue but let's talk about uh francois legault let's talk about what he's trying to propose in quebec and based on your own interpretation of it, you could be, yeah, you know what? These anti-vaxxers are a pain in the ass, make them pay. But here I am sitting saying, you know what? No, you know what's sad? Is as much as I loathe the man, I actually agree with Jason Kenney on this one, where it's like, you can't do it. And not because for, and not because it's like, we're not denying, no one's saying we're denying them care. I get you're not denying anybody care. But you're saying because you're anti-vaxxed, you're being a pain in the ass and you're taking away beds, well, we're going to tax you? Well, no, you're, it's, I called it to someone, I called it eugenics by taxes. Yeah. That's what I, and I know it's, I know it's bold on all, and I'm, I know I'll be attacked for it too. 
but I don't particularly care because let's, here's how I said to somebody, I said, you know what? I'm a fat fuck. And if someone wants to say, oh, you're a burden on our healthcare because, because you're, because you're a, because you're a chubbly wubbly there who can't uh, take care of himself. You don't know me. You don't know what I'm doing, but you instantly assume that that's the case. And now you're like, no, you should pay. You should pay too. I need something else. And you're taking up and you're taking up space. You should go there. It becomes a very slippery slope, slippery slope when you start segregating and start ostracizing and differentiating people just based on certain things. I don't like anti-vaxxers. I'll be perfect with here. I don't. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not going to force someone to get a vaccine. I will not point a gun to your head. My job is compliance. That is what I do as a safety officer. My job is compliance on the daily. But compliance is a culture and you, and we have to encourage compliance. I can't force it. So someone's sitting here and they got the camps saying, yeah, 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 do it. I'm like, you would be the first ones to bitch and scream if something happened that you didn't like. And let's put it this way. Someone might be like, oh, um, he wasn't the first, but I know, uh, I know Corey Hogan had mentioned, it's like, I wonder how they feel about carbon taxes. I wonder how they feel about this. The same people crying for it. How this would feel here? Because it's meant to discourage. It's meant to change a habit or a mindset. But I can't put it. I can't. I can't negate or I can't diminish the value of a life, Chris, to a political talking point. And when we're dealing with people and goalposts and everything we're talking about here. It's like when all you're doing is reducing another human being to a checklist of, oh, you must believe this, you must believe this, you must believe this. It's like, no, you're diminishing and, de and you're devaluing a person because they don't fit how you, keyword, how you see them. When it's really, no, no, see them as they are. Don't see them as you want them to be. I remember the comments about centrists in the, in the municipal election. And they'll give you, and they'll give you the graph that kind of goes left, right, but if you're a centrist, you kind of swing that graph down and oh, look, you're more on the right. But it's like, well, no, that I don't, I don't believe I, if you try and make something like that linear, when it's not linear, it's fluid and fluctuating can move based on circumstances, evidence, whatever happens, you diminish and take away from a rich necessary conversation. Talking points, policy points become reactionary in nature they become based out of fear. That's where I find with Legault, like this is the second time he's done it. This one here and then Bill 21, it's a secular, secularization of society, but it's like, no, 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 no. La Belle Province is pretty Catholic. Like, let's be real. It's not secular. It's not secularization. It's more of a, let's wrap ourselves in our nice warm Vatican blankets or whatever. And I'll probably go to hell for that too. But I don't mean, and I don't mean to diminish or devalue any different religious faiths. So I don't want them bad mouth bashing me too. But the reality is, that's innate. That's the nature of politics and life in, in life in Quebec. Is it's out of fear. Yeah. No different than the shit show going on here in Alberta. If we're gonna sit here and jump on Legault for doing this, then no one, then none of us have the right to jump on Jason Kenney or Dina Henshaw for the absolute bullshit they're pulling on regarding our COVID management. No one can do it. That's my own take because it's, again, it's bad policy, but it's policy made out of fear and reaction. It's made out of a gut check response to something. It's like our government has mismanaged that to a point where it's now an ideological talking point. That's what it is. But so is what's happening here in Quebec. If we're gonna give, if we're gonna not give Kenny a pass, then in my mind, you can't give Lego a pass either. Well, I, it's the same thing. Or if you have, or if you have in the case, you have a leftist politician, whatever the case may be, advocating for some really shitty things or not willing to play hardball, but they're like, oh, but he's one of us. And I'm thinking some of the things that the liberals are doing and uh, Mr. Singh's kind of in his own way, kind of blocking some of it. That's absolutely, I think, fine, maybe necessary legislation. And he's just playing games. It's like, no, 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 no. If you don't want Aaron O'Toole or Justin Trudeau playing games, then you, Mr. Jagmeet Singh, you can't be playing those same games either. So, but 
this and this is where you get the people and then the people get riled up and then it becomes pissing matches everywhere so no the, the, we have to in my mind we gotta we gotta delineate ideology and spectrum because they're bad words i think they're antiquated they have no real context in an ever-evolving world maybe in the 90s it would have made sense when we weren't as so interconnected but we're a lot more interconnected than we had hoped to than we had ever thought to be the internet the accessibility of information has made that very uh made it the world at our fingertips and then again social media plays its own role and you got the clicks you got the likes you got the ticks you got the snaps and that's supposed to shape policy but that's not how policy should be shaped that's not how you can't you can't make big hot button issues or resolve them in 280 characters or a meme as much you as you try it. you can you can if you think you're amazing but you honestly like you said you can't um yeah i i just can't believe after this week i i have anti-vaxxers in my family and vaccinated people who have come together in their dislike of francois legault so if anything francois legault is uniting canada behind their hatred towards francois francois legault and hmm. uh it goes back to that statement that the uh um moderator of the federal leaders debate in english said about bill 21 about being a racist bill and uh eve francois blanchette was like no it's not we are people and we can do whatever we want well technically no you are a racist people because you support this bill and it is a bill that is a racist bill plain and simple yeah. and our federal leaders need to get on board and realize you know what we need to put these people in place and i say you people by the provincial government not in general, we need to say, okay, enough's enough. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And right now, the gander is looking at the goose and saying, guys, smarten up because what you're doing is hurting our democracy and not and making us more ununited than we are. But there's that. Um, yeah. I'm just cautious of time here. And I just have one last question before I wrap up. Before yeah, for sure. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite. Be sure to hit that subscribe button today to be kept in the loop of all the great episodes that are coming up on the show. Also, click on the links in the show notes and follow our social media pages as well. The question is this, and this is going to be a long winded question, so please bear with me. Okay. We are in 2022. We yes. are 20 months into this pandemic. We are a more divided country, divided people than we have ever been. We have a social media platform, many social media platforms that are very angry, upset, and re reactionary where they will yell at the screen and hope for the best. And whoever hears it, hears it. And whoever doesn't, doesn't. Um, how do we unite? How do we unite to where we were when it was in the 90s, where we had one common enemy? We had one common thread of what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What is that moment going to look like? Is it is it Zephram Coffrin like making the warp speed to find the Vulcans? Uh, yet again, there's not an episode with Jeremy and I that we do not mention Star Trek at least once or twice. Yeah. What what is that moment this year? Because I fear that more people will get canceled. We'll be further divided by the end of this year, and I hope not. But what is that moment that the Canadian people, the world nations need to come together and say, you know what, enough's enough. Let's just have it out and have the conversation because it's not going to get better if we continue to not talk to people who disagree with us on issues. Honestly, Chris, your question there, I don't know if I have a really good answer. I'll try my best to answer it. That pivotal moment is going to be when we realize that too many, too many lives have been lost, figuratively, factually. When we, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a part in the expression, a come to Jesus moment where we recognize that our actions have reared some very ugly consequences. I don't know if it's going to happen in 2022, 
But what I what I see it what I see it looking like is I see people realizing that the current system, the current structures that we have in place right now have failed us yeah. and we've allowed them to fail us. But it also is going to come when we realize that, okay, these systems have failed. Now we have to create something different and build anew. It's easy to say, oh, we just change it, but no, change is the wrong word because you know what i'll put it this way chocolate covered nasty is still nasty just because i give you a pile of dog crap and put a put fondant on it doesn't make it doesn't make it a dark chocolate cake it makes it crap with fondant on it so it's still nasty what you want to do is actually turn it into a damn cake you want to transform it the paradigm that we're currently see, we're seeing here is and this is where to the credit of to the credit of some uh, left-wing thinkers over the years, is the current systems, the current way we've structured society is very class-based, very colonial-based, very hierarchy-based. And you know what I also call it very, very patriarchal-based. That's reality. That is, that is a reality in this world. And you see, and you see it, but, it doesn't mean that the solution is going to be break it down and replace it with something else just like it. Oh, it's our turn now. No, that's not how it works. You can agree that a system is broken and still be willing and still like, I'm trying to figure out the right way, right way to see it without freaking raging a raging a freaking shit storm for you. But I love it. It doesn't when mean happen sometimes. It doesn't mean though that you yourself are that way. It means though that you benefit from a system that has worked in your favor. You recognize the inherent privileges and the inherent biases that exist. When we recognize our biases for what they are, when we recognize our thoughts, our process and actions as being a culmination of events that have influenced, guided us and transformed how we see the world. If we take the blinders off and take this, and put them back over here where what happened, what you mean of what you think about it and not collapse them into the story that you tell of your life and actually separate them and keep them for where they are. Recognize, oh, I feel this way. Okay, that's nice, thank you. But and recognize, well, this is what happened. We can then start to look at, okay, this happened. How do we correct it? How do we move forward from here? In this case here, What's happened? Well, a pandemic hit, okay? Um, a variant of SARS, SARS-CoV-19, entered into a, entered into our life, was transmitted from animals to humans. Humans have now gotten sick. Humans have died around the world. This SARS-CoV-19, or SARS-CoV-2, whatever you wanna call it, has multiplied, or multiplied and has mutated. We've had multiple variants. Each variant has its own different impact on society. That's what's happened. Yeah. We have vaccines. Vaccines are meant to teach the body how to fight it. It is not a cure. Vaccines are like a condom. It won't prevent you from getting pregnant, but it will definitely diminish the chances of it. So, so like there you go. 99.9% .9 chance that you will yeah, not get well, pregnant. Yeah, well, you know what? That point one. <laughs> There you go. Consider well. Consider consider the latex, the Trojan for the Trojan for your body. So there you go. So anyway, comes in and it might come in different flavors. I don't know. Anyway, now that they're going to announce for PG thirteen to rated R, there you go. Huh? I I did that. So fun times. But no. But I agree with you wholeheartedly, though. What? But that's what it is. It's not. Oh, it's a plot to enslave the human race. Oh, it's not this, or it's not big pharma. It's not all this stuff. The reality, yeah, there are some companies right now that are making a killing profit in the manufacturing, the distribution, and the recreation of, of, of vaccines. That is fact. That's what our system has allowed, period. You want that, you want to shift that, you want to shift that mindset, then okay. We shift how we approach healthcare. We shift, we transform how we approach um, inequality. 
we shift how we deal with these different issues. Chris, we talk about like Canada and the United States as being the be all end all. There are so many parts of the world right now that probably still haven't had one dose of this. And here we are bitching about this. Like I got, there are people in other, there are people in Africa that haven't had a single job. And the reality when, cause you go and you read and you talk to people is that they're our own issues are being compounded and magnified down there because they don't, because they don't, it call, come, runs counterculture to everything these, uh, these indigenous persons like living there were never taught, but no, here you go. Here's the influence of the white man going down there and they're amplifying their own anti-vax arguments. Like, but it's not of their own design. We perpetrate it and we send it on the way and then we're like, we need to get these folks vaccinated. And then they're now fighting the same battle over again. But the battle originated here. We think sometimes we're smart for our own good. We need to stop. Stop and assess. Stop and recognize that we're more similar than we are different. And those people who absolutely love the purity test, and I know a few of them, and bless their soul, some of them are, some of them are great people. I can interact and enjoy their, their interactions. And some of them fucking piss me off. And it's like, and stop you're not going to win any members to your flock by doing that that's not how this thing works you're only going to ostracize more people and then you become your own echo chamber i would like to i like to consider myself in as i approach the age of 40 definitely more on definitely more on the leftist social democrat side of things but i also found, i also know that there is a role for a private market, but that private market needs to be put in check so they don't exploit or abuse or, or abuse people. But there's a role. There are some things that can do government can't. And there's a lot of things that government should be doing that the private sector has no business being in. And people don't like it. Well, that's on them. It's not on me. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, because I don't fit someone's mold, I'm going to change who I am just to belong to you. Screw that shit. That's high school bullshit. And I'm done. And I'm, I'm I, I won't, I won't do it. Good so, on you. Good on you. you. I had a microphone and be like, mic drop. Um, Jeremy, thank you so much for this. This has been a enlightening 50 minutes. I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day to sit down and do this. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. We will certainly have you back throughout 2022 because we have a lot of time to fill and a lot of people to talk to and a lot of questions to answer. But I, I, I end on this. Um, for everyone listening to the cross Board Interviews with Chris Brown, thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, please remember that on February 3rd, we will be sitting down live with Councillor Courtney Penner at 6.30 p.m. Tickets are available on eventbrite.ca. Uh, the tickets, uh, proceeds of the tickets will be going to the Women's Center of Calgary. So come out and support a great cause. We want to raise some great money for them. And then also we are off Saturday and Sunday, but we will be back all next week with a week-long series on transgender Albertans, where we are going to be sitting down with five transgender Albertans, transgender Albertans and talking about their life story, where they came from, where they're going, and uh, giving a voice to sometimes the under uh, represented. So all next week, we have five great guests on the show. So please tune in every day next week. All these interviews were recorded prior, except one, to 2022. So uh, the rebranding that I just started at the beginning of the episode, I will be changing a little bit next week, but uh, tune in next week uh, to catch it. As always, uh, hit the like, subscribe button in the show notes, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Look at that. Uh, Jeremy knows what we're doing. Uh, so for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent rest of your Friday. Stay safe, keep talking, and uh, we'll be back Monday morning. Talk to you later, guys.